Tonight I'm going to be talking about punishment, what is effective punishment and what is not, and also principles of punishment. What I've found over the years is parents are always asking me what is effective punishment. And it seems to be the primary way that parents feel they need to get their children under control. And I don't know where this idea comes from that the only way you can get children to behave is by, as I've explained to you the very first time, blowing up and exploding or sending them to the naughty corner or the big one is taking away TV. This must be the most universal punishment that I've heard from all types of parents. So a parent will come to me and say, you know, I don't know what to do. My child doesn't sit down and eat with us and I threaten him that he's not gonna watch TV and it doesn't help. And this seems to be like the biggest tool that parents use. The other one is to go to your room. I tell him to go to his room and then he runs out after five minutes. So what should I do? So I hope by now, and this is why one does need a course rather than just one session, I hope for those of you that have been coming that you've understood that it's much bigger than that, that if you want your child to cooperate, it's a lifestyle change. It's about thinking differently, it's about putting systems in place. So what we spoke about in the first of this trilogy was the importance of building self-esteem because when a child feels good about themselves, they tend to behave better. Just like all of us, when we're in a good mood and we like ourselves, we tend to be nicer to everyone around, we tend to be happier about helping. When we are feeling yuck, when we hate ourselves or think we're losers or just don't like ourselves, we tend to be less generous, we tend to be gripey, we tend to be miserable. So self-esteem has a very strong correlation with cooperation. So rather than just waiting for that magic takeaway TV method or some other one that you're hoping I'm going to tell you tonight, you need to actually look at the self-esteem of your child. Then what we spoke about last time, and I hope you went away really thinking about it, was relate to your child as a child in the sense that get into their worlds, play a game to get them to cooperate, get involved with their characters and so on, rather than being this harsh disciplinarian. And one of the reasons that it doesn't help to be the harsh disciplinarian is not only that it's not always good for your child, and we're not talking about being authoritative, we're talking about when you're harsh, when you scream in that really critical way, when you give them a smack, but when you actually do this, you will find that you actually lose. That you will get onto a sort of a treadmill where you're getting more and more frustrated and trying harder and harder to punish and it becomes less and less effective. It's a bit like a drug. You know, in the beginning, the first time you take a drug, it can actually knock you out. But if you keep taking that same drug, your body gets used to it and you need to actually take larger and larger amounts to have the same effect. Now punishment is the same. The more you punish, the more you yell, the more you have to do it. So the first time you yell at your child, they might jump and listen. The second or third time you've got to yell louder or more and you will find yourself on this treadmill. So it's not a very effective way of being. So there are a few things that you need to know, and that is that if you want to punish, you've got to be very sure that your child deserves to be punished. And why I'm going to go through these things now is you need to see punishment like medicine, like a drug, but something that is so powerful that you only use it on rare occasions. So for example, chemotherapy is so horrible and actually destructive for the body that you only use it when you really need it. You wouldn't just use chemotherapy every day of the week. You know that it's a bitter medicine and it's used in, on rare occasions. Now punishment is the same. It should be a bitter medicine that you use on rare occasions. And when you do use it, because you use it so rarely, it will zap the behavior you want. But if you're giving the same medicine all the time, your child gets habituated to it. 